how they did a Nintendo Direct today. They did. This. Yes. And we are going to chit chat about the Nintendo Direct Nintendo that they Direct. did today. On this here podcast. On this here podcast. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Why are we, why are we talking like this? <laughs> Good question. You want to talk about Nintendo? Uh, I guess. They're, <laughs> they're a company. They're a company. Yes, that is what, we're going to talk about the Direct today here on this week's episode of the Seasonal Anime Checkup OVA. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Al and Ladium. Hello, hello. This is episode number 320, and it's direct time. Direct time! It's February, so it's time to roll out a direct and show off some games that are coming out later this year. Nintendo just kind of, like, dropped it yesterday. Like, by the way, this is happening. And we're just like, okay. All right. Direct time. Direct time. Uh, Yeah, some interesting things that came out before this direct launched. Mm-hmm. With uh, a lot of people finding out that the new Legend of Zelda game is going to be a 70 United States dollars. Yep. And that is, in fact, confirmed. Yep. I was very curious to see how they would try to explain that, and it turns out they weren't going to explain it. They just didn't. <laughs> they just didn't. They are just like, eh, $70, f*** you. Yeah. Um. So that's... Yeah. Um, like, I was joking that... You know, if they're going to charge me $70, they need to do, like, a DK64 thing where they add, like, the the expansion pack like they, they did for the 64. Mm-hmm. They, I don't think they're doing that. No, it's just, hey, other people, I think it's mostly, Other people like, are paying are charging yeah. $70, we're going to charge $70. Yep, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. The shareholders are like, hey, why are you guys not making people spend $70 on games like the other companies? You should do that. Gross. And Nintendo was like, "Whoa, yes, of course, we should all we should do that." Gross. We love money. Money. Yeah, so that that's real stinky. Yeah, I mean, like, apparently the way around it at this point is the voucher thing. Mm-hmm. But um, as I was mentioning to you earlier, like, I don't want to have digital only games. I want to have physical games, and the voucher does absolutely jack for me. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that was irritating and really frustrating and, uh, kind of a downer, um, going into this whole thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. Well, let's dive into what they actually had to say. Mm Mm-hmm. Things they actually talked about. Uh, they kicked things off with Pikmin 4. Throw the red guys in the water. It's, it's still Pikmin. It's still Pikmin. It's a new protagonist, I think. That's all I can tell you. It's Pikmin. And there's Ice Pikmin. Red Pikmin. <laughs> there's a um, dog. There's a dog, right. There's the little dog Pikmin thingy that goes bork bork and breaks stuff and floats, I think. You know, sure. like dogs do. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole time I was just thinking of Corona and she was probably going to love the dog in Pikmin because she was playing yes. Pikmin recently. <laughs> uh, that's coming out July 21st. For sixty dollars, yeah, the game exists. Uh, after that, they announced more DLC for Xenoblade Chronicles Three. Holy moly! There's a new hero, which we we kind of already knew was a thing. Yeah, we knew that. that like the middle, her- middle chunks of DLC were going to be characters and all that sort of stuff. Wild uh, hair. Yes, the hair is something. There's a roguelike challenge mode in it as well. That's coming out on February 15th, so next week. And then they showed off a brief tease of the story DLC that comes out later in the year. Very brief. Also, the you get like um, nostalgia costumes for the characters with the new DLC that's coming out in February. So that's kind of cool. They they mm-hmm. based off the old characters. Um, but yeah, the brief trailer is like what, maybe twenty seconds, if that. Um, holy shit, though. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Um, like I, I, I've mentioned when we did the Xenoblade podcast, like, oh, you know, I don't really want a prequel DLC. I'd rather have like an epilogue DLC. But this trailer was really good. It it has a lot of questions for me and I'm like, also like Shulk is so pretty right now. It's like unfair how pretty Shulk is now. Like what the 
is that about? Like everybody's talking about Rex, and you know that's that's fair. They could talk about Rex, but like Shulk, man, look at him. Um, but yeah, we also get the what looks like probably the the Van Dam founder. Which but is... will it be Rhine time? I mean, yes, because Lance can get a Rhine outfit. No, I want actual Rhine. I mean, I also want an actual Rhine. Actual Rhine time. I would also, like, we get beautiful Shulk. Why can't we have beautiful Rhine time? Well, maybe that'll be a thing in the DLC next, or later this year. Yeah, we'll find out. But um, this was this was where, like, they really got my attention with the, <laughs> with the director. It's like, oh, oh, I'm paying attention now. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, uh, after that, they announced a new Samba de Amigo game. Mm -hmm. Kind of came out of nowhere. Samba de Amigo Party Central uh, coming later this summer. You would use the Joy-Cons and you act like you're using Baracas, just like in Samba de Amigo. Yep. It definitely feels like it has been a long time since they've made a Samba de Amigo game. Yeah, I don't actually. Was it on the Wii? The last one? I think there might have been a Wii game. I think there was a Wii Samba de Amigo, but I don't remember there being one between that. Yeah. So that's cool. Uh, after that, we get a game called Fashion Dreamer, where you get to be a fashion influencer. Woo! And it looked very weird. The walking animation was horrifying to me. Like, I don't know what was wrong with it, but, like, something about it, I was just like, that, you're not, you're not a person. It, it, I like to, I like to be able to go up to people and then, like, say, hey, I like your clothes. I'm taking your clothes now. And then steal them? <laughs> oh, my God. That was wild. Um, I mean, I could see this being fun for people who are, like, into fashion and, like, want to do, like, clothes creation, that kind of thing. Um, it's not for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the walking animation just terrifies me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, after that, we got the Dead Cells Castlevania crossover DLC, a trailer for that. Talking a little bit about that. That comes out March 6th. Um, I don't think there's really anything like real new that was kind of touched upon here, but it was still neat to see that and to hear those classic Castlevania tracks. What is a man? What is a man? I had that scene in there. It did. Good. Dracula. Dracula. I did At like there was Alucard. one part of that where they were talking about having the whip, and it just mm -hmm. shows you uh, like doing the Super Castlevania Four thing where you just hold the whip and like move the D pad and it just goes. <laughs> 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 I like that. I thought that was real good. That was yeah. like a really good touch. That is really good. Uh. Uh, after that, they showed off Tron Identity, a narrative adventure in the Tron universe, coming to Switch first on in April. I didn't, I didn't realize people still cared about Tron. Well, I think they kind of do, but then there's also like the movies that are coming and Jared Leto's attached to them, so people aren't really caring about those. Oh, there's new Tron movies coming out? I think so. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, the next announcement ruled. Yeah, they're putting <laughs> Ghost Trick back out. Yay, Ghost Trick! Oh my god, I love Ghost Trick so much. That's cool. I love Ghost Trick. I'm real excited for this. Um, I do. Meow. I do like that. There was one part. Where, did you hear that? No, I just hear you go meow. <laughs> oh no, now it's sounds crazy. Um, there was one part. Where they're like, yeah, you can save this woman. Like. She's actually a really important character to this game, but that's okay. <laughs> this woman. This woman. Um, that is, that uh, that's coming out this summer. I will uh, buy that. Yeah, that's been out on, I think, like, mobile. That's been mm -hmm. basically the only place you could really play it outside of you had, like, the DS version. Mm -hmm. um, so it's cool that they're bringing back that back out to modern consoles. Like, I have never played Ghost Trick, so I would be <gasps> curious to play that. You haven't played Ghost Trick? Nope. Oh, my God. My dude. I have not played the ghost trick. You're going to love it. If you don't love it, I'm going to be real mad. 
I'm just gonna come and fight me. I'm just gonna fight you until you're like, okay, you know what? Ghost Trick was a good video game. Thank you. No, I'll just I'll just double down on it and, and be like, I hate it even more. No, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, following that, we got a new game called. Decapolis? Decapolis. For some reason, I was thinking like Decapolis, but I was like, that doesn't sound, no, that's not right. Um, It's like a JRPG, but you're a detective. Like, it's half detective work, half JRPG. Also, you're There's a cat. There's two worlds. Point. It's it's interesting looking. It it, it was interesting. Um, I think we both came away from that, like, while we were texting each other, like, that sounds kind of cool. Yeah. Um, like I obviously want to see more from it before I make a decision on whether I'm actually going to pick that up or not. But like, it looked cool. Yeah. Uh, that is coming out in 2023. At some point. Uh, yeah. It's neat to see new games from level five. Yeah. We'll see another one of those later in the the direct yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, they showed off more of Bayonetta Origins, Cereza and the Lost Demon coming out on March 17th. Showing off some of like the combat stuff in it, which mm. I didn't think looked all that great. Nope, nope, it sure did. I mean, not. it's definitely a different take on what you expect from a bayonetta game, but like that's not the kind of combat I would come to a bayonetta game. For. Do we want a different take on bayonetta combat? Yeah, that's kind of the question. But also, again, this is a full price game, so which is also a mistake. So that's that's hmm. Mm. Mm. Uh, Splatoon Three is getting an expansion pack. Hmm. Which the first part of it, uh, I don't remember when exactly. I guess this comes out in spring. They're letting you go back to the like lobby area from Splatoon One, <laughs> which sure, like it gives you like access to all like the stores and everything, and like concerts. all of that concerts. It's like it's an interesting idea, like because you know you can't play Splatoon One on a Switch or anything, mm -hmm. but like charging people for this is a very odd idea. I feel like. Yeah. Uh, but then there, the second part of it is looks like it's probably gonna be like story stuff. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Which like that that would make sense that you would charge for that because they did the last game as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that the first part I'm just like, hmm. That should <laughs> be a free DLC. Yeah. Yep. Uh, after that, they showed off Illusion Island, the uh, Disney platformer, coming out on July 28th. I said to you, and I stand by this, if this had online co-op as opposed to a local co-op, I would want to play it just because it looks somewhat interesting. It has a nice look to it. The problem it I feel like I have with it is that I feel like any time recently they've done Disney platformers, they've always been real mediocre. Yeah. So like that's the thing that I just like look at it like side eye and like, hmm. All right. Well, let me let me alter this statement okay if it had online play and was cheap i'd probably want to play it because yeah. like i imagine that me and you playing a disney platformer would get chaotic yeah like we could we could definitely make our own fun with it for sure yeah like for some reason when goofy like does his weird aerial move he like shoots out from a mustard bottle which is very confusing because i've never sure. associated goofy with mustard maybe that's that's what new disney is is trying to give you goofy and mustard the maybe. ultimate combination maybe and then like minnie is the the butt pound person it's like okay all right donald duck's there donald duck's there yep that's all you really need right that's all you really need for sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh following that fire emblem engage downloadable content was announced. Yep. Uh, they're putting in more characters for the game. You get Hector, Soren, and Camilla for Wave 2. Um, and then Wave 3 gives you Krom and Robin and as Veronica. One set. As one set. And Veronica is the, the Fire Emblem Heroes original character. So she does like gotcha for gotcha. Like, her special attacks. Which I think is a very funny thing. That is funny. <laughs> Uh, and then Wave 4 will add more story content for you to play through. Mm -hmm. And then Wave 2 is out today. Today! So you can you can get more rings for your Fire Emblem person and you can rub those rings. Oh no. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. 
after that, we got a new game called Harmony: The Fall of Reverie, which is a the new game from Don't Nod. This was so pretty looking. It's very nice looking. It's a, obviously a branching path narrative game, which is that's Don't Nod specialty. Yeah, that's what they um, what they do. Yeah, I thought it looked interesting. It did. Like, I really, really thought that the style of it was was really, really striking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is coming out on June of 2023. Okay. So soon. Uh, Octopath Traveler 2 has a demo out now. It has save data that it carries over to the main game and is like the first couple hours of the game if you want to play that. I got mad because there was a shark. That was that shark was real big. Real big shark. I was like, "What are you doing here? Get out of like, here!" Hey. You just like flopped up there. I'm, I'm like, a "Go, shark. go away!" I'm gonna eat your whole boat. Ugh. Game, stop putting sharks in it. <laughs> it's the I'm not. Gonna, the I'm shark. not. I'm not gonna play that game anyway. But like, <laughs> sharks, man. <laughs> See, that's the official take of the SAC OVA. <laughs> sharks. Man. Well, I, well, after that, they showed off a game you were more interested in. <laughs> yeah! They're doing a remaster of We Love Katamari, now titled We Love Katamari Reroll and Royal Reverie. A lot of reverie in this this block of the direct. <laughs> uh, was, was We Love Katamari a PS3 game? Oh. Um. I feel like that sounds right, but I don't remember. Was that the, that wasn't the one on Xbox, was it? It might. I don't know. I mean, hold on. I have the Katamari you have games. Any of the Katamari oh, games? True. I was gonna say I have the Katamari games. So, um, no, Katamari yeah. Forever was the PS3 one. Gotcha. So was this like a sequel to original Katamari? Then it might have been on PS2. I remember I played it and I loved it because it's a Katamari game, but. Uh, right. P- PS2, yes. Okay. So that is coming out on June 2nd, and I think as well you can do a trial version of the original the original Katamari remaster they did. Which is really good, and people should play it. Um, You just have to really get used to the control scheme at first, because it, it's confusing. I mean, it was kind of confusing when it first launched in 2002 or 2003. <laughs> Well, it's still confusing. They didn't. Yeah. They didn't fix that. <laughs> nah, I mean, you don't really need to. It's fine. You, you just gotta roll, man. That's all you, just you gotta, gotta roll. do. Just gotta roll. Pick stuff just up. Just keep rolling, 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 rolling. Oh my god. <laughs> this is why we're friends. It's true. Hi, Max. Uh, another RPG called Sea of Stars has a demo out now. Also, a release of August 29th. I like barely remember any of this game. I think it had like an isometric look to it, kind of ish. I don't remember. But I feel like I blanked out on this game all. at all. I <laughs> yeah. don't remember it in the slightest. It oh, is no. a video game. It is a video game. That's that's what I could tell you. Yep. Uh, a free to play game called Omega Strikers, which looks like four v four air hockey, is coming to Switch on April 27th. Um, I love how like intense the announcer was about mm-hmm. air when he said air hockey. Yes, he was real, real jazzed about some air hockey. That's the way you got to be. You know what? Uh, I, I support him. They are making an Etrian Odyssey Origins collection of the first three Etrian Odyssey games, which features new illustrations, difficulty, auto map functionality. Also, you can draw the maps yourself. It looks really awkward and weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are coming out on June 1st. If you'd like to buy all three of those games together, you're going to spend $80 for them. Which is disgusting. Or if you want to buy them individually, they are $40 each. Also disgusting. It's real messed up. Uh, there's going to be special, I think, Persona DLC for it of characters from like all those games. That tracks. But you'll probably have to spend money on the, that as well, so it's Almost even more. Most likely. Most likely. Atlas gonna Atlas. <laughs> They're like, all right, where's my money? Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Advanced Wars 1 and 2 is actually going to come out again. War is over. They have, Yeah, congratulations to Ukraine. They survived the war with Russia. <laughs> Nintendo has declared it over. I didn't realize it was over either, but apparently it's over. Now we get Advanced Wars. Yeah, so that's coming out on April 21st, or if they decide, hey, we're not going to put it back out yet, we're going to yeah. delay it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know. We'll see. Uh, they showed off a special epilogue coming to Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. 
featuring Magolor, who is apparently a Kirby character that can only jump and do basic attacks at first. And just like you, me. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> we are baby. We are baby. Uh, there is a demo out for that now and is coming out on February 24th, which is soon. Soon. The Nintendo Switch Online is getting more consoles. Bum, bum, bum. The Game Boy. Not that Game Boy, but the Game <laughs> Boy console coming to the Nintendo Switch Online for Game Boy of Nintendo Switch Online. Get some, some Game Boy games. Sorry. Yes. Game Boy games. <laughs> Man, let, me, um, let me load this up real quick and we'll talk about Game Boy games. Oh, are you pulling up which games are there? Yeah. I can I can I can do that too. Oh uh, yes. Uh they allow they have like filters on it as well where you can have like original Game Boy so it looks green. You can have Game Boy Pocket so it has just like the gray monotone. And then it has color support as well for, you know, if you had a Game Boy color and you just plugged in a Game Boy cartridge. That's actually a really nice touch, honestly. Yeah. I know some people thought that they should have put in um like Super Game Boy functionality, but eh. I don't feel. I feel like that doesn't really change that much, except for like you get a border. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the games you can play for the Game Boy are Alone in the Dark: The New Nightmare, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one I looked at. And I was like, that is huh? a very out out of left field pick. Yeah, that one was definitely a. a I I went huh? Yeah, two thousand and one Game Boy Color game, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Game & Watch Gallery 3. Woo. Sure. <laughs> yep. Uh, Gargoyles Quest, which is neat that they're putting that on there. Kirby's Dream Land, the, I, the debut of uh, Kirby. That curb. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX, the Game Boy Color version of Link's Awakening, which has mm -hmm. like the secret dungeon and the Game Boy Color special stuff it has in that game. Mm-hmm. There's like, a few more things. Uh, Metroid 2 Return of Samus. Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins, which is a good game. Mm -hmm. Tetris, you may have heard of it. From Russia was fun. Yeah. And Wario Land 3. Yay. Uh, the only difference between the U.S. and Japanese markets for this is that Alone in the Dark is replaced by a Mahjong game. <laughs> oh, I think we win on that one. <laughs> That's the only difference. And then also coming. That's not all. There's more. It's the Game Boy Advance. Oh, man. I was so jazzed with this. Which is definitely, I think, something that people have been wanting for quite a while now. Yeah. Uh, we get uh, quite a few GBA titles, including Kurdo Kurdo Kurdoran. Hearing the announcer say that was really good. The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. <gasps> I've mentioned this to you several times, and I don't know if I mentioned it on the podcast. This is one of my favorite Zelda games, period. Mm -hmm. um, I am so, so jazzed to play this again. Um, and I'm so jazzed that you get to play it. <laughs> um, I love Minish Cap. I love it. It's literally one of the best Zelda games, period. It's real cool. It's real cool. It's real cool, and I'm glad that it's out. Uh, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Also a very good game. Mario Kart Super Circuit. I don't know if that's a good game. I think it's like a greatest hits of Mario Kart. That tracks. To that point. <laughs> I get it. That tracks. <laughs> uh, Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Brothers 3. Uh-huh. Which also features, I think, like the e-reader levels as well. Which is really cool because, like, you know, those wouldn't really be accessible if they didn't put that in there. Right. Uh, and then WarioWare Inc. Mega Micro Games, which is also Just very cool. Fun. Um, yeah. I also was real jazzed because I was like, man, I would re be really, really happy if we got Golden Sun. And then I was like, oh, no, there's no Golden Sun. It's not, not on here. And then they did the scroll of, like, things that are coming in the future. And there's Golden Sun. Yeah, um, so there are, there are games that are going to be coming later in the year, presumably. Uh... On the Game Boy, you'll get Oracle Ages and Seasons. <laughs> uh, Pokemon Trading Card Game, which is neat. Uh, and Kirby Tilt and Tumble. And then for the Game Boy Advance, you will be getting later in the year Metroid Fusion, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, Fire Emblem, 
F-Zero, Max Velocity, and Golden Sun. It's a shame they're only doing Golden Sun 1, but not Golden Sun 1 and 2 at the same time, but... Um, you know, we had to wait back in the day, so I guess everybody else has to wait now. Yeah, maybe they'll, uh... That'll be the they'll second, do that la second later on. Drop. Yeah, that'd be great. So yeah, an interesting set of titles there. Um, and they're out now, so that's crazy. Yeah, it's out now. That was the, that's the thing that we should also mention for sure. Uh, when are they going to put Bok Tai for the GBA on this, <laughs> you know, Hideo Kojima's weird light sensor game? Oh my god. The people are clamoring for Bok Tai. He must be stopped. I, I'm I'm very excited that they're putting GBA stuff on there because like I have not played a lot of GBA stuff. I've played so a gives, lot of GBA stuff. So it gives me an opportunity to play some GBA stuff that I have missed and all that. I'm so yeah. excited for you to play Minish Cap. Like I Those cannot are a lot today. Cannot describe to you how excited I am for you to play Minish Cap. And for me to hate it. If you hate it, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I will literally just cry at you and <laughs> then you have to deal with that. Uh, so, you know, that'll be a fun podcast. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so after the Game Boy, we got Metroid Prime Remastered. It's Metroid Prime 1, and it's on the Switch. It's out now. Yeah. For digital, or if you want to get a physical version, it comes out on February 22nd. It is 40 US dollars, which isn't terrible. Not terrible. Um, It seems like they've done, like, significant work to the game where like they've added modern controls to it like there's new like new and better graphics and all that sort of stuff so people have been clamoring to play those metroid prime games mm -hmm. mainly so metroid prime they... 4 that they announced and then that, just promptly that forgot is, i don't about. know what you're talking about that i've never heard of that doesn't exist what's that what's that so that is uh that is out now if you would like to play some metroid prime which, that is something that I thought was going to get touched on today because they took down the pre-orders for it yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but it did not get touched on, so. No. Who knows what that was about? No, no. I don't think anyone knows what that's, what's going on with that. Does Nintendo know what that's going, what's going on no. with that? <laughs> They're throwing it in the vault and just being like, ah, we hope people forget about it. <laughs> we'll just keep remastering the old ones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a new trailer for Master Detective Archives Rain Code. I'm really excited was about after this that. game. I am also excited for this game. This is coming out June 30th. Wow. And it still looks very cool. It looks really cool. And I love that they, they showed us like more of like what the other detectives do. Although one of them looks surprisingly like Chucky. I don't know if you noticed that. I mean, that's not surprising. <laughs> it was weird. Um, but I I am really excited for this game. I have it pre-ordered. I think I have the special edition pre-ordered. Um, but it looks really cool. Mm-hmm. For sure. Uh, a lot of people got real excited about these next two games getting HD remasters. Botan Kaitos 1 and 2 coming out in the summer if you love card battling RPGs. I was wondering when I was watching the trailer, like, why did I never play this? There had to have been a reason why I never played this because it looks interesting. And then, like, you fight with cards. It's like, oh, okay, that's why. <laughs> uh, so this is the games that, like, Monolith Soft made on the GameCube, mm -hmm. which is why a lot of people would be very into this. Mm -hmm. uh, I really did not know about these games until a lot of people were like getting very excited about the potential of them getting put out on the Switch again, was one of the rumors for this Direct. And then they showed off that trailer, and I was like, oh, it's a card game. Huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. I remember, I remember that it existed, but... Like I said, I had a moment of like, why did I never play these? These look kind of cool. And then like it showed the cards. I'm like, yep, okay, that fully explained. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, those come out this summer. Uh, after that, holy sh they're making a new Fantasy Life game. Let's go. <laughs> I'm very excited for this. Uh, Fantasy Life, The Girl Who Steals Time. It's a new Fantasy Life game. You get to do the fantasy life stuff of being like, I want to hit trees and build stuff. And also, I want to fight monsters and build an island and then fight more monsters and just do whatever I want. It's my fantasy life. Yay. Oh, man, I'm super excited for this. 3DS Fantasy Life was really good. I think 
post that they put out like a couple of mobile games which were not that well received but Ooh. a new console fantasy life game please inject that into my veins immediately that's how i feel about the game that came after that <laughs> yeah they, they also level five is making a new professor layton game <laughs> The professor's silhouette showed. I was like, oh my god. Professor Layton in the new world of Steam. That's all they basically show is like, hey, the professor's here. Here's a title. Literally, there's right, like, later. here's a title. Here's the professor. No See information ya. about it. No date. Nada. Hang on. Nothing. I, got a, I got an idea what this game's going to be about. Huh? Puzzles. <gasps> what? I know. It's very shocking. But... Oh my god. Spoilers, man. God. What if... What if at some point they put out Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright on the Switch? They should. They should. <laughs> because that game rules. That game, that game is real so fun. <laughs> unfairly good. I'm glad we're in agreement here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, we both have good taste, so, of course. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, they showed a brief teaser for Way 4 of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC packs. Yoshi's Island. A, it, which is a brand new original track. Yeah, Yoshi. So not a uh, a remaster of a previous track or anything like that. It's a new track as well, and Birdo is coming in as a character. Birdo, that's exciting. And that's all they too. showed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's coming out in the spring. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that was a montage of some stuff. Just I remember usually... that 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 Disney game is getting an update. Yep, sure is. <laughs> Guess I'll get to do some more fishing. And you'll and get to let that game break on you again. <laughs> that game breaks literally every single time I play it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the game Blanc looks really, really cute. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's still unclear to me what kind of co-op it has. Right. Um, because if it if it's online co-op, then like I definitely want to play that with you. Uh-huh. If it's local co-op, then I'm like, well. Uh, hmm. Maybe it's out on another platform then. <laughs> That's what I was hoping is that like if if it's local only that it's like on PlayStation so that we can just share play it. Yeah. Um. So fingers crossed because it looks super cute. Like I love the style of it. It's always funny yeah. when they they do trailers for the Battle Network the Battle Network Legacy Collection because it's like here's a bajillion titles all at once. <laughs> and you're just like, yep. Vomiting titles at you. It's always funny. Uh, yeah, and then their closer, of course, The Legend of Zelda Tr- Tears of the Kingdom, which I, they showed off some stuff, but again, it feels like they have not showed off really anything about this game. Other than, hey, there's a car now and a big glider hovercraft thing, and you okay. can fight on the ground and in the sky. Can, can I tell you what my brother and I were saying earlier? Please do. Okay, so... Everybody keeps saying it's a car, and in my brain, it looks like a mower or, like, a tractor or something, and my brother is the same way. He's like, oh, look, he, he's, like, on a tractor, and um, they were like, oh, my God, he's farming for money. Like, he's going to cut the grass so that he can get a ton of money. That's what's happening right now. I I wish that was the probably the thing, but it's probably <laughs> not going to be, but that was way funnier than just him driving a car. I mean, that's what Keller and I were both like. We're like, oh my god, he's got like a, a mower. He's mowing the lawn. He's just trying to get money. <laughs> he's a farmer now. A money farmer. I did like the person who took that screenshot and then put like The Legend of Zelda but replaced Tears of the Kingdom with Nuts and Bolts. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was very funny. <laughs> that's really funny, actually. Um, I, I am very excited about this game. Um... I mean, I, I know that that's the most shocking thing in the entire universe. I just want them to show me something that, like, I'm surprised by. Because I feel like all the trailers, from all the trailers we've seen since they announced this game, nothing. I've it's the same amount of knowledge I have from when they announced it five years ago. Right. It's like, yes, it's the same Breath of the Wild world and everything. Yes, it's going to play like Breath of the Wild. There's a few new vehicles. That's That's the only new thing we know. Like, I, I mean, obviously, they're probably going to have, like, a specific direct for this game before it comes out mm-hmm. on May 12th. Yeah. Um, Because that's usually what they do. But, like, I just wish they kind of would have showed something new here. Like, something significantly new, I should say. Yeah. I, I was also, again, talking to my brother about this. And one thing that we were talking about is that, like, 
poor Link, like, basically died in the first game. And then in this game, he, like, has significant damage to his arm. Like, they show at the very end, like, the shot of him, like, reaching out to Zelda. And his arm is just, like, a hot mess. Like, it, I don't know if it's, like, been on fire or what happened. But, like, it is a disaster. Um, so obviously that, like, that leads to him getting his, like, techno arm, but... His power um, glove. Oh my god, his power glove. Um, I think Keller called him Cyberlink, but, um, like, that poor dude, he just needs a nap. He doesn't need to mow for, for money, he needs a nap. <laughs> what if this was just, what if this is actually a farming sim? I mean, honestly, that'd be pretty interesting. I'd play it. But would you um, play it for seventy dollars? Yeah, I mean that's the elephant in the room. Is that like why is this seventy dollars? It's because Nintendo's getting greedy and so are the shareholders and capitalism is garbage. Um, the other elephant in the room is the collector's edition looks like, and it's what like a hundred and thirty dollars, hundred twenty, hundred thirty, hundred and thirty dollars, and like this is me. This is me. Like. 40% of my apartment is Zelda related. Um, I have a literal tattoo of Link and I'm looking at this collector's edition and I'm like, that's bull. Like an art book and a poster and like a steel book for $130. Like get absolutely f Nintendo. I think there are some pins in there too. Oh boy. Um, but what the f is that? Like, Breath of the Wild is such a really cool collector's edition. Mm -hmm. And then you're, com you're coming at me with this bull****. No, get out of here. And it didn't cost $130? It did not cost $130. Like, I, I saw it go up earlier for pre-order. I'm just like, nope. No, thank you. Nope. Um, I did pre-order the Amiibo, though. I think the other elephant in the room is that if you're going to charge $70 for this game, you better hope to God it runs incredibly well. Because we know Breath of the Wild ran very poorly on the Wii U, mm -hmm. didn't run the best on the Switch, mm -hmm. and we are, what, six years into the Switch's lifespan, and there are still first-party games on that on that console that do not run great. If mm -hmm. you are going to charge $10 more... Mm -hmm. you With better no hope explanation. That, for no explanation, you better hope that that game runs at 60 frames per second, does not chug, no pop in, has to be the best looking Switch game ever, has to be the best performing Switch game ever, or else you are just the dumbest f idiots imaginable. It is Nintendo we're talking about. They are the dumbest f idiots imaginable. Nintendo makes some really dog decisions sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like. Nintendo, I love a lot of the stuff you do, but you make some dog decisions sometimes. You basically had the decision-making skills of, like, a 13-year-old boy going through puberty and, like, just was introduced to a girl for the first time. Yeah, because, like, you can't come out here and, like, stealth put out a price increase for this game and this game alone. Put out a trailer that shows nothing reasonable that says, hey, this is why we need to have a premium increase on this title and this title alone. Right. And then just not say anything about it and expect people to be happy with it. No. I mean, the the price increase is really gross, and it's it's very frustrating to me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they should have at least tried to justify it. Like, it there would not have been a justification. You couldn't, ju like, you couldn't tell me this is worth $70, like, because Breath of the Wild wasn't $70. Um, but, like, at least try to tell me why you're charging that much <laughs> the thing is they're probably just like we don't have an explanation no like the explanation is because we can and we want more money yeah uh, Sony's doing it Microsoft's doing it why shouldn't we do it that's their reasoning it's gross so like the thing is, overall, like, I felt like this was a really, really strong direct, and I was really excited for a lot of it, but I also have that, like, nagging bad taste in my mouth. You know what this is like? This is like being so jazzed about your, your new games and all that, 
And then you accidentally, when you're switching out the carts and your switch, put the cart in your mouth for 10 seconds so that you can do the switch and you get that bitter in your mouth. And then you can't get it out for the rest of the day. That's what this is. Because you're so jazzed, like you're playing this great game, you're playing this new game, yay, this is awesome, but your mouth tastes like garbage the whole time and you're just salty about it. That's what it is. That's my explanation. Yeah. Because I, like I said, this Direct was really good. I was really excited about a lot of these games and like, if I had gone in and there had not been that like price tag jump, I probably would have been like, wow, this is amazing. Like, this is such a cool direct. I'm, I'm, I mean, the collector's dish is still kind of funky, but, um, I wouldn't have come away with that bad taste in my mouth, I think. Yeah. It's hard to, like, be really happy with them when I realize they're doing some, some terrible practices. It do be like that. It will be like that. I hope you like my explanation of what this feels like. No, it, it that tracks. <laughs> you know, a very specific thing that I've done a few times, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. It's the second time I brought up the bitter cartridges today, by the way. Why am I not surprised? You shouldn't be. It's true. But that is uh, the Nintendo Direct... Oh, one other small thing is that you can scan the amiibo and get different, um, like, paragliders based off of them. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a cool touch. Problem is, again, like, I have them because I I buy all the Zelda amiibo, but like, kind of sucks that you can't like get the neat Majora one unless you have the Majora Link, which I'm sure it costs like ten thousand dollars now. An arm and a leg, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> An arm. <laughs> Bye, Link's arm. He sold it for the Majora's Mask amiibo. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, Game Boy. What does Game Boy think about this? Um, He's staring at me and has been for, like, five minutes. Like, directly into my soul. Um, But he also knocked off my lunchbox, so... I don't know what that means. He's probably just mad because I said his name a lot. Most likely. Yep. Anyway, you get to play Minish Cap. That's great. Good news. <laughs> Good news. Good news indeed. Yay! Uh, but that is, uh, that's the Nintendo Direct in a nutshell. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The video games are coming. More boys are coming. More boys are coming. <laughs> that's gonna do it for the pod this week. Yep. Thanks for being patient with us for pushing it back. Unless you're listening to this on Saturday, in which case, it doesn't matter to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this week. So if you'd like more from us, head on over to seasonalanimecheckup.com or sac.cools where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Jared and Al Watch. You also find columns and reviews on the site as well. If you'd like more from Anne Ladium, go to annladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. You can follow us on Twitter and TikTok at Anime Checkup. You can buy our books, One Shining Moment, a critical analysis of Love, Life, Sunshine, and Hot Tubs and Pac-Man on Amazon.com. And you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash S-A-C-O-V-A. Buy us a slice of pizza, get access to unedited versions of the podcast early, and a wealth of bonus content as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Next week is the Valentine's Day episode, which means we got to talk about Atome. Atome time. So I was going to talk about Atome. Love or pretend? And pretend to be a lover. Yeah. So look forward to that next week. <laughs>